Hello and welcome again. Uh, last time we discussed the, the, the process of decryption using the stream cipher and we saw that the process uh, is again just using exactly the same situation. You have SOAR here and you input your bits here and so what you did for encryption is exactly the same as you do for decryption, exactly the same operation. Now we're going to explain now why is that the case. Uh, the case the reason that you always add also, let's call this an addition, not really an addition, but let's call it addition, this work addition. You add S for encryption and you add S for decryption. You do exactly the same here, addition of the bits or the string of bits here, S. Now, the reason that's going to work is because of one of the properties of SOAR. Now, remember, this is the truth table for the SOAR operations, 0 plus 0, 1, 1, SOAR. 1 is 1. I'm going to call it plus. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. So if you look at these two lines here, so I'm going to I'm going to look at this property of Zor here. If you look at these two lines, this line, and this other line here, what those two, two lines are really saying is the following, the following fact, the following thing. If you take a bit and you soar the same bit. So x is a bit and x is a bit. It could also be a string of bits. It's going to be the same thing. What happens with the result? So is they are the same. 0 plus 0, 0. 1 plus 1 is 0 again. They always give you 0. So if you take a bit and add or soar the other bit or bytes, it doesn't matter, it's going to give you 0. So this is equal to 0. Or in other words, it's going to be a string or zeros. So why is the process of encryption decryption uh, using exactly the same operation plus? So I'm going to mark this down here, this property, which is important for us here. And let's see that. So when you do encryption, let's look at the process. When you do encryption, you take the plain text, which is X. You sort it with this string of characters, string of characters, no, a string, a string of zeros and ones. And this guy here is the ciphertext. That's why. Why is equal to that. So one Bob gets that. And the process of decryption was what? It was soaring with the S. So to the crypt. So to the crypt. To the crypt. What is the process? The process is you take the ciphertext at Y and you soar it again with S. As here, it represents the bits or whatever the string of bits that you have. Now, but let's look at this. What is Y? Why is the ciphertext? And how is the Y obtained? Like this. So I, I'm going to replace this one here. The Y, instead of saying Y, I'm going to say is X, SOAR, S. So this is exactly the same as saying I have the following thing. I have this is equal to X, SOAR, S because I'm replacing that is the Y and then SOAR S again. So this guy over here, this is a Y. That's the process of decryption, right? You take the ciphertext, the ciphertext and you sort it with the string S. Now, if you look at what we have there, I'm going to use another color. This guy here is S, SOAR S and by this property, this one right here that I'm marking with an asterisk. That will be zero. So then what happens there is this is going to be equal to X SOAR zero, right? So I'm going to write that down. So as you, I'm, so I'm going to write it down here, X SOAR zero, because S SOAR S is zero. What is anything SOAR zero? It keeps this guy, right? So let's look at that. So if I if I zor with zero, if I have an x here and I zor it with zero, it doesn't change the x. If I take take this x, if x is zero and I zor it with zero, it gives me zero. If x here is one and I zor it with zero, it gives me one. So it's giving me the same x. So this is gonna give me x. Let me write that down. This is gonna give me x. That's the reason why. When you have to decrypt, the only thing you have to do is you just add 
or you soar s again because when you soar, uh, soar with s basically what is happening in reality is that the s's or the string of characters is kind of canceling out canceling out means that when i soar it it gives me zero and the zero with soar is has the same property as the zero in the real numbers with addition would you take a number you add zero the number doesn't change it keeps the same thing so that's why the process of encryption decryption is exactly the same so you to encrypt you add these characters uh, uh, this is string of zeros and ones to the string of ciphertext to decrypt exactly the same thing you take this uh, the plain text or the ciphertext sorry and add the string of these characters here so that's why it works so I want us to discuss that because that's an important property of, of this operation this one uh, here that you always get when you x or x you always get zero now another thing i want to mention and this is one of the important parts here of the sword is that uh so this is a more general picture right so we have the sword here the stream cipher you enter a string of zeros and ones so you stream it here and here it comes out and of course you have to have some kind of uh, sequence here that bits are generated from the key they are generated from the key There's, again these bits here are not the binary representation of the key they are generated from the key though and then you do the sort and you come in here you get the, the cipher text so basically what i'm saying is every bit y of i that you see here is equal to every bit that comes here in the same exactly the same position that's what the i is for there the ith position so whatever the position is here for that string of characters zeros and one now what do you think uh should be the property so the, the big part here of the stream cipher is actually in here and this and this uh these that are generated by the key if you look at it the stream cipher it would be extremely simple if it was just sore okay so all the the big part here of the stream cipher will be actually here in the how you generate the, uh, these bits from the key. One thing you can do is, for example, I'm just going to generate zeros and ones, and with, for example, one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero. So like a pattern, right? Now if this string here has a pattern, a recognizable pattern and I saw it, then there will be a pattern here in this in this ciphertext. If there is a pattern there, the attacker, Eve, can recognize that pattern and can decrypt the message. And we don't want that. We don't want Eve to decrypt the message only by looking at the pattern that is coming out here in the, in the ciphertext. Of course, you cannot make the X's here not to have a pattern because this is some kind of message that should make sense on the other side. So you cannot control uh, the pattern here. It should be some kind of pattern. But this one you can control. It should not be, should not have a pattern. I mean, a recognizable thing that you can say, okay, it's behaving this way. You can, uh, con you can control this one, but not this one because it's the, the plain text. So what's going to happen here is if you don't want this uh, ciphertext to be recognized, to have a pattern there, something that is recognizable, then you better don't have a pattern here so a recognizable thing that you can say if you if that's the case okay the bits what i'm saying here is this the bits those bits should not have a pattern for example something like zero one zero one zero one so that's gonna it's gonna be a terrible idea because then this here will translate in something here that is also a pattern now if it's not like that then the bits that are there should be randomly generated from the key and the big word here is random, randomly generated. You want something random there. Random once you put on the key. So a randomly generated sequence of zeros and ones. And you want that. And the reason you want that is because you don't want to have something here that has any kind of pattern there because the attacker will recognize that pattern and then might be able to crack the cipher. So the big part here will be this part here where we have to generate a sequence of zeros and one that is we can call it random here the big word is random so this is a more complete picture of the stream cipher so the stream cipher will have this kind of uh, inner working so so let me explain that so what happens here is the following thing so there's a complete picture here of the 
of the stream cipher so more complete picture of the stream cipher so x is going to denote as always is going to be the plain text y is going to be the cipher text and k is going to be the key for the stream cipher what happens is uh, plain text is going to come in here like this this direction as a sequence of zeros and ones a sequence of bits okay it's going to encrypt it so to encrypt it of course you need to have the key okay encrypt it with the key remember that there are bits that are are coming from the key so inside that block that I was drawing what you need to have there is a couple of things you have to have a number a random number generated of zeros and ones that is gonna be kicked out kicked from from the from the key so this is gonna start the random number generator so you put a key here and it's gonna generate a sequence of random zeros and ones that sequence that is here is gonna produce this sequence s1 s2 s3 and so on how many elements you generate here? As many as bits X has. So this is also part of the block cipher. The block cipher should also know once you put in the X, it will actually generate as many as many bits as it goes through here. So if it's one bit, it's gonna generate the first bit. Another bit, the second bit. Another bit, the third bit, and so on and so forth. And this is gonna be starting from here, from this random number generator that's gonna take the key and generate the random number. So once that sequence is generated, of course, we saw it before, you have here the X goes inside this, sort that sequence of bits that are here with the sequence of the randomly generated bits. And from here, you're gonna spill out or output the ciphertext. So this is a little bit more complete picture of, of, the, of the stream cipher. So for example, this will mean that if you actually wanna construct something like this, Right, like an electronic uh, a device that that this. So inside that uh, stream cipher, you will need to construct a couple of things. One, a random number generator, and a sort gate. Okay. So that's a couple of things we need to do. That of course this is more complicated than that. Of course, uh, having a random number generator is something that we need to discuss uh, here also because that's not as as easy as you may think. And the sort of course is not complicated to implement right so the main part here of the big part of the stream cipher is in here in the stream in the random number generator that is going to start from the key now this random number generator uh, should be in the in alice and bob's side so once they put in the key the random number generator will generate the same bits for alice and bob but it will be random for both the same bit for both for Alice and Bob, but it will be random. So that's the big picture now. A little bit more uh, precise picture of what the, the stream cipher looks like. So in the next videos, what we're gonna talk about is actually this one because this is the big part of the whole thing, the random number generator. So we'll discuss a little bit about this in the next video.